My name is Robbie Tanerowitz and I play for the Cincinnati Reds. I got to Cal, I hit like a buck 62 my freshman year. I was like eight for my first 95 and then I tore my TFCC in my wrist my sophomore year. Didn't get surgery, played, hit like a buck 70. Went to the Cape after my sophomore year and that's where I met Lance Rashford. His word was suave, I still say it sometimes. And it was just like the first time he hit with me, he's like, what is wrong? Like, are you angry? Like, what's going on? He's like, suave, bro, suave, chill, chill. And so like that got me to finally like stop being so angry all the time at the plate. But I hit well there, came back to Cal, did well, continued the suave style into my junior year, and then got drafted in 2016, later than I thought. After round like 15, I just walked out. And I got in my car. My mom and dad went with me. We went, we went, uh, we hit it in my middle school. So like when I wasn't getting drafted where I wanted to go, the only thing I wanted to do was go hit. And then uh, my dad was late, so my mom was flipping me. And uh, he's wearing a raise hat. And I was like, oh, this motherfucker's rubbing it in. Like, God damn it. Um, and he's like, hey, you, uh, you got drafted. And I was just like, I don't care. Like, but I was 21, like just being a hardo, like, oh, I don't care, I'm gonna keep hitting. And after I was done being all pissed off, like, Gave him a big hug, both of them a hug. That's how I got to Pro Bowl. My first year in Pro Bowl, I was in Princeton, West Virginia, with the Princeton Rays. I think I hit like 295, did well enough. My manager was hard on me, and it was a good thing. He didn't let me not play hard, and I always appreciate that. But then we get to low A, I still don't have a good swing. I'm sure they're like, okay, maybe he can hit a little bit. I'm hitting like 320 with 11 homers after July 4th. I didn't tell them, but like I had a bunch of bone chips in my arm and one of them chipped off during like early work, but I was in pain from like the middle of July till the end of the season. I don't think I hit another homer. I had surgery after the, my Florida State League season in 2018. They told me not to hit, but I was like, fuck that, I'm gonna hit. So I hit and I felt good. And I went down to spring training then like my arm kind of like gave out and I didn't tell anybody, which was stupid and my fault. Um, and I just hit like a dark place. Like that was the first time I would ever like drive to the field and like hate my life and like sit in the car and just like wait till the last second to go in. The saving grace was a FaceTime from Dudo. Me and Robbie met um, in college. We both went to UC Berkeley together. It's actually funny because Robbie took took my starting job. So you gotta come to driveline in the off season, like like I'm gonna make you a stud. And I was like, Nah, dude, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. After like the hundredth phone call uh, and, and maybe reaching reaching a low point in his career, uh, he decided to take that leap of faith, and, and we just got after it. I was here all off season, and then I went to spring training. Definitely made improvements. But like, didn't I still didn't do as well as I thought I was going to when I got to spring training. I know the coronavirus like cut it short, but I had like four or five at bats, and I think I flew out to right three times and like grounded out to short once. I was like, I don't feel, I don't feel good. June first, Jeff McLaren calls me. I'm, he's like, Hey, Robbie. And I'm just like, Oh, this isn't good. <laughs> You're not telling me I'm the, I'm on the taxi squad, are you? He's like, Nope. It was just like, Hey, thanks for like getting me into pro ball. Thanks for taking a chance on me. Like, kind of generic stuff, but like, heartfelt. Like I meant it. Like, I got drafted in the 27th round. Like, clearly nobody wanted to take a chance. Like, I could have gone back for a senior year, but I didn't want to. After that, it clicked. It was like, fine, like, let's 100% buy in. And so that summer, I went to war. So I was gonna go play in Japan, and then like a couple days before I was gonna sign that contract, this kid comes in, Big Mike, whose dad is the lawyer for the Reds. And I hit in Big Mike's group, uh, for like a week, he was like, hey Birdman, like, do you have a video of yourself hitting? And like, I had put one up on Twitter. It's like two minute, 30 second video. He sent it to his dad. His dad showed uh, the GM and the GM was like, oh, I like that. Sent it to whoever he needed to send it to. And I was talking to Bodie. And then he got a phone call from the GM. And uh, the GM was talking to him about pitching stuff, whatever. He didn't put on speaker, he was on his like phone. And then Bodie goes, Actually, one more question. Puts it on speaker and he goes, what do you got on uh, signing Tanerowitz? We need to sign him. Driveline changed my life. Like, 
I was a misfit. I was like, I never fit in anywhere. Like I didn't know what I was doing. But like you come here and it's just like immediate love. Everyone here has a same common goal. Everyone trains and acts and behaves like they're, they're desperate to achieve something. And I think Robbie was certainly, you know, in that boat in his career and he really took to that, that culture of it really well and kind of set a, a really good example for, for other trainees around here. I fit in and I never fit in before. And like, I never wanted to admit that I didn't fit in, but like, I found a home. Never thought it'd be in the Pacific Northwest, but I found a home.